Yeah, I think um, the uh, Daniel's market has definitely um, increased over recent years. His popularity has spread worldwide, whereas you know previously, I think it was more localized to Europe. Um, we definitely got in a lot of interest um, now from Asia and the Americas. Um, but I do feel that uh, pocket watches, I think if they're high quality, beautifully crafted, you know, rare pieces with provenance as well, they will achieve the right price. Um, we've had the English pocket watch sales where we sold the James Ramsey um, for about 900,000. But, you know, that's the right, it's the combination of a beautifully crafted watch with provenance. I think that's what clients are looking for. They're looking for the rare and unusual, the really high quality items. Yeah, that's, that hits the mark with um, today's market. Yeah, I think you're, I think you're right, totally. Um, and this, I suppose the slightly sad thing is that you have these, these things like fantastic Frutsham tourbillons or um, uh, Northern Goldsmiths, um, complicated watches that, that just haven't changed in price and they are absolutely fantastic pieces and totally beautifully made. Mm. Um, but I think, I think you're right, I think when something has the mixture of the provenance and the, and, and the, 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 the technique behind it, mm -hmm. then they, they do, do do very well, mm -hmm. they explode. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I don't want to be the devil's advocate. I suppose I, I do. I do agree with all the points made. I think um, I think George um, George's legacy and and the, the the growth and worldwide interest and everything that he's done and the sort of the impact of what he's had on on, on so much of sort of watchmaking today, English watchmaking, etc., is is such that um, I think we're only we're only starting to see. Mm. The sort of the, the it's the cusp we're not seeing this isn't the maximum extent this is just going to go bigger and bigger and bigger i think as far as george is concerned i think english pocket watches in general um unfortunately uh i think with with some exceptions um in they're not necessarily uh they're not necessarily exciting people yet um i think that a lot of these things Go round and round, and and this will come back. There just there can't be a there can't be a world that I refuse I refuse to exist in a world today where where you know beautiful examples of exceptional watchmaking that have ex incredible historical pedigree aren't recognised for what they are. But today, people aren't prepared to pay, uh, in, at least in my eyes, you know what those watches are actually worth. Mm -hmm. They're only prepared to pay what they think. Um, you know, might be a sort of a quick, a quick buck deal, or you know, a, a, a you know, a relatively smart, long-term investment price. Mm -hmm. um, so I think yes, provenance uh, and history will will always push up certain pocket watches, but but I think that's a t unfortunately I think that's a very small minority, yeah. um, and I think we're a long way away from seeing the the just blooming of the rest of the market. But mm -hmm. um, but the, when the space traveller two sold, uh, mm -hmm. I just thought, well, you know, how fantastic is this? It's <laughs> in such a short space of time, such a massive appreciation of value and, mm. um, and you know, I had a number of clients call me up and ask, you know, what do you think about this and do you think, you know, should we bid on it and blah, blah, blah. And, um, what did you say? <laughs> I said, absolutely not. What a terrible waste of money. <laughs> <laughs> I quickly went and squirreled uh, I thought, right, um, no, no, I, um, I, I said, well, you can't really dispute it. It is what it is. It's, there's no, there, it's the, a preeminent example or the preeminent example of uh, of modern day, quote unquote, English watchmaking. Mm -hmm. You know, it is absolutely the zenith of, of, mm. of sort of what you, what you would want to acquire if you were into collecting great English watches yeah. uh, of the last hundred years. Yeah. Um, and had such a huge influence on, on other watchmakers, hugely. independent watchmakers, hugely. even all over the world. Massive. Yeah. I mean, it's, um, yeah, it's, it's not just Roger. Um, to his extreme, you know, considerable credit, who's sort of carried the baton for George and, and has sort of so built on his legacy. Others have clearly been inspired in, in, in massive ways, and um, you know, I, I do hope that that will translate more and more in the future to people looking back at great English pocket watches. Well, we're all waiting for the Frodsham, aren't we? Mm. Mm. With George's coaxial. Mm. Mm. Yes, yeah. <laughs> Not coaxial. No, no, double, double wheel escapement. Double wheel, that's right. Yeah. 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 Whenever that will appear, yes. we. 
Can't wait. Still waiting. <laughs> mm. you know, it's like that uh, this Buzz Aldrin Speedmaster or whatever. It's, it's just somewhere. Yeah, it'll appear mm. one day. Mm.